Welcome to Dragon Slayer Update, the only show dedicated to Howard Community College Athletics. This month, women's volleyball battles Essex, Region 20 soccer gets underway, plus an inside look at fall ball in another installment of Dragon Close Up. We'll lead off with women's soccer. Howard takes on Potomac State in a match with serious playoff implications. Mark Zeno has more on this Region 20 showdown. Thanks, Diane. I'm here with soccer analyst Kenefa Mullings. Now, the Dragons' 7 4 one record doesn't fully tell the story. All of Howard's losses have been to Division I national contenders. Coach Seagrove's Dragons are undefeated at home. They're also undefeated against the region. Howard can clinch the number one seed in the region with a win. Kenefa, what's been the key to Howard's success? The team has a great relationship with each other. Um, they're kind of like family. Uh, ball skills are a major component, like playing the feet, playing the sidelines, and switching the field, but the team does need to communicate more. Potomac State is an NJCAA Division III program that competes in Howard's region. The Catamounts enter the match with a 5-3 and three record last year. Potomac State beat Howard 2-1 to one in a physical contest. Catamounts went on to do some more damage in the Region 20 tournament. They even knocked out the defending national champions and made it all the way to the regional final. Kanifa, what do you expect to see from Potomac State? Definitely playing rough and not a good kind of rough. Um, they have a pathetic kick and run style of play. Potomac State has a new set of girls who are not as dirty. While scouting them, I realize they don't play as well as last year's team. They lack dribbling skills and trapping ability and basic movements on and off the ball. The goalie is amazing. And because our goalie is new, they're gonna try to take shots at her to test her out. Howard and Potomac State face off next. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First half, Howard is winning the possession battle early. Failed to clear by Potomac State. Desiree Bazzioni wins the ball for Howard. Dribbles ahead, takes the shot, it's over the bar. D-Ray has a powerful foot, but if you don't lean over the ball, it's gonna go too high. Ninth minute, Loveline Kenfeck pressures the Potomac State back line. Not a strong touch from the Catamounts defender. Rebecca Anderson brings more pressure for Howard and Potomac State concedes a throw in. Dragons aren't wasting any time. A nice run in by Kenfeck. Back outside to Anderson. Here comes the cross. Divina St. Peter finishes with the header. Howard takes the lead. The fact that Love was there and got the ball back to Rebecca was key. Rebecca was able to cross the ball in high enough for a header, which makes it harder for the goalie because she's short. MG plays the ball all the way to the end line, then sends a ground ball to LB. Big time save from Alana Nappi. Loose ball in front. Noppy is there once again. Free kick for Howard. Lisa Bianchini takes it. That's a beautiful ball. Here's a chance for the Dragons. Noppy blocks the shot. Loveline Kenfeck looks to punch in the rebound, but oh, this shot is just wide. 43rd minute, tremendous ball from Desiree Bazzioni. Rebecca just needs a touch toward goal there. Anderson swings it in. Alex Collier fires, but it's off the post. Overall, we played rough. We took a lot of shots and did a lot of passing. We were goal hungry. Action from the second half. Rebecca Anderson, deep ball to Alex Collier. Katrina Zebarth beats her to the ball. We're in the 80th minute, free kick for Potomac State. Kirsten Rayner takes it, excellent ball from Rayner, but no one gets on the other end of it. There was nothing that could have prevented this. There was nobody picking up trash for Potomac State, and the player that did run in timed it wrong. 40 seconds remaining in the match. Potomac State looking for the equalizer. What a lucky break. Break away for the Catamounts. It bounces right to Rayner. She's all alone, but can't put it on goal. Missed opportunity. There are a lot of missed opportunities today. Not a strong game for the Catamounts. Howard holds on to win. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. Rebecca, you hit an amazing cross to set up the only goal of the game. Talk about what you saw. Um, well, I was wide open on the side, and Love was in the middle, and she had three girls on her, so... I was screaming for her and she looked up, passed to me, crossed it in, we got the goal. All right, Divina, how did it feel sending that one into the back of the net? I felt awesome. I was waiting for it. Just, it just, I just saw the ball and just turned my head and went in. You had a smile on your face for the whole next play. You were real happy? Yeah, just wish we had a few more in, but it was a nice play. Couldn't do it without a nice cross. Um, Rebecca, how were you able to stay um, focused when a lot of the shots weren't going in and their goalie was making some great saves? Uh, you know, we just had to stay positive and we just saw we're talking to each other the whole time, like trying to boost ourselves up and taking as many shots as we could, which we did take a lot. Yeah. I think 30 shots, so. 
All right, Devon, I noticed in the beginning of the game their team was kind of yelling at each other and angry, and your team was really, really happy, and you seem to get along very well. How important is that? It's so crucial, like, just to have a bunch of girls that all get along. We constantly lift each other's spirits, and it's great. Like, we never break down or fold, but it's awesome when you see the other team do it. <laughs> all right, Rebecca, how were you and your teammates able to win so many 50-50 balls today? Um, we definitely were cheering each other on, you know. Whenever the ball was in the air, we were like, get two, you got to get this 50-50. So that helped a lot. Congratulations on the win and happy birthday, Rebecca. Thank you. For Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. The head coach of women's soccer is here. She is a five-time Region 20 champion. Kate Seagroves is in the house. Welcome, Coach. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. Coach, let's get right to it. What were your expectations regarding Potomac State? Uh, we treated this game just like any other game. Um, our team has set a goal that we will not lose at home. And so we went in knowing this was a home game for us. We just come out and play our game, and it worked for us. We were able to pull out a W. What adjustments did you make at halftime? Um, basically, our team is a very technically sound team. Uh, we're, we're very skilled. And sometimes we forget that, and they try to play into what the opponents are doing. And so I told them at halftime, we just need to play our game. This is what's going to be successful for us. We can't just send a bunch of long balls in there because, for one, their keeper was very strong, and they were packing it in pretty, pretty strong defensively. So we needed to find a way to spread their defense wide and pull them out of out of the back a little bit to open up the inside. And it. it we did a better job of it, but uh, you know we still couldn't find the back of the net. But we did, we dominated. I mean, it was 30 shots. We just got to find a better ratio of putting the shots in the back of the net. Talk to me a little bit about your schedule and the Division One opponents opponents that you played this year. Do you think by playing Division One opponents in our conference has helped prepare you for the region tournament? Oh, absolutely. Um, we we have four losses this year, and all of those losses are against uh, Division One teams. Um, Early on, we went down and played Lewisburg and Cape Fear, which are both Division One, and that kind of set the bar for us, and it made me realize that, wow, we've got something really special with this group, because we hung with two nationally ranked teams. Um, Lewisburg was in the finals, or was in the national tournament for Division One last year, and we hung with them the entire time, both teams, uh, to go down there and hang with that, that, that caliber of a program was, uh, it was something really special by our group, so, and then Obviously, playing against Harford and College of Southern Maryland, those are extremely, extremely tough games for us. But we didn't fold. You know, we gave them one of their their toughest battles. And uh, even though we didn't get a get a win out of it, we we played pretty well. Players stepping up this season now. Have you had any surprises? Um, Lisa Bianchini is is a person that comes to mind right from the start. Uh, she, her mother actually called me the day we were having our first practice and she asked what she had to do to get her daughter out there and I said you have to have a physical and you have to have this paperwork she came with it and she's been a star ever since um, she's originally a forward and when I first saw her I was like oh my gosh what a great goal scorer but then as the as the preseason started to you know narrow down I realized we really didn't have anybody strong in the back so I approached her and I said hey how do you feel about playing sweeper and she took on the role, she embraced it, and she's, she's done a phenomenal job for us. So she definitely has stepped up. But you know, all in all, I think everybody's brought a little bit of something to us. You know, we have Desiree Bazzioni, who's just a force in the middle. Um, Alex Collier up top, you know, Rebecca Anderson is you know, out wide, and MG, who is Mary Grace Granfield, um, she's a transfer in. You know, they, everybody's just stepped up at different times. So it's been, it's been a pretty special group. What is, this, what is this about this team that has lent itself to be the number one seed? Your characteristic of your kids this year, what do you think? Um, we have a lot of talent. Um, we're very, very strong with our skill set. And that's pleasant. I mean, it's great to be able to go out to practice and work on s these really small drills and they get it. Um, what makes this group special? I mean, we are very low in numbers this year. Mm -hmm and we've had to deal with some injuries. So we're consistently having only 12 people at practice every day. And I went out yesterday kind of knowing, okay, we're gonna have 12 at practice today, but we had one of the best practices we've had all year. And you know, I was talking to two of the young ladies, Lisa Bianchini and Rebecca Anderson, just about that today. 
and we actually did fitness at the end and you know a lot of teams could come out there with their 12 and they could take advantage of the situation saying you know what she's got to play me anyway we only have 12 people what is she going to do if we don't work hard but that's not the case at all they go out there and they grind it out day in and day out and when it came to time came time to do fitness they they worked their tail off and that to me says that this is something really special because when you have a team with that low of numbers and to see them work as hard as they they have been i think you know it, it says a lot about us and it, it makes me excited to work with them now talk a little bit about your assistant coach uh, athena is it's fantastic um she knows what she's doing you know she's involved in odp she coaches club programs um, this is her first college situation um, but she comes out there and you know i don't like to say she's my assistant coach i basically call her you know coach you know and if she comes out and says hey i was thinking of doing this today i give her the run you know she she takes the reins and she runs the show and you know she's she's got a, a lot of input so i think as a team her and i are working very very well together so do you think this is a team that can take you to your fourth national trip? I absolutely do. Um, I, and I try not to get too excited about those things, but I know that the possibilities are there. I know that if we play the way we all know we're capable of playing and we come out and play for 90 mm -hmm. minutes, there's not many teams that could stop us from getting there. Now it's a new location this year, right, for the Nationals? Yeah. Where are we headed? TC3, uh, I think it's in Cortland, New York, which is right outside of Ithaca, so it's probably going to be really, really cold if we make it there. I mean, <laughs> I, I'd like to get there. I, don't, I, can, my, I can handle the cold if that's the case. Now, for you as a coach, you know, in the past when you've gone to nationals, you've gone to locations that you were familiar with. Now, this could be technically the first time you've been going to the, a national tournament and you've not played in this area. Is that a plus or a minus for you as a coach? Um, you know, well, there's a little bit of, you know, we've gone three times, and the first year we went to Genesee, and that was a battle for us because we were practicing the whole week before, and it was 70 degrees here. We flew up there, we get off the plane, and it's 27 degrees. So this will be a little bit like that, I'm assuming, if we can get there. Um, we've also gone to Nationals at Herkimer, which is also, you know, middle of New York. It's very cold. Um, it was kind of nice having it in PG in 2010. Um, I'm waiting for them to start hosting these things in Florida. It'd be a, <laughs> a little bit nicer for everybody. I think uh, the fans would appreciate it, but um, you know, it's it's another challenge for us. And you know, as of right now, I think this team is up for any challenge. So, well, I want to wish you the best of luck, and I'm going to go out pretty soon and buy some long underwear because I'm I'm rooting for you. <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully we get there. See Good you. luck. Thank you. It's time for women's volleyball. Howard battles conference rival CCBC Essex. Mark Zinno anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. I'm joined now by Howard's assistant coach, Danielle Katsampas. The defending district champions had to face adversity right away this year. In the first two weeks, Howard played some of the best programs in the nation and emerged with a 6-5 and five record. The Dragons have responded by winning five of their last six matches, including important district G wins against Anne Arundel and Montgomery College. Stephanie Kelly's having a phenomenal year. The All-American setter is picking apart defenses and running it up the middle to Victoria Johnson. Johnson is four days removed from a 17-kill performance. Danielle, what does Victoria Johnson bring to the program? I mean, besides power, besides that Herculean strength, Victoria also brings leadership in a high skill level that you don't commonly see at the community college level. Stephanie and Victoria have developed a setter-hitter relationship, and that's exactly what's needed to get us to nationals this year. Their relationship has been a great example for incoming freshmen, especially Paige Morgan, to build off of. CCBC Essex is an NJCAA Division II program that competes in District H and the Maryland JUCO Conference. Essex enters the match with an 8-8 eight eight record. The Knights are armed with conference leader in kills per set, Cassidy Keller. Danielle, what makes Cassidy Keller tough to stop? She's experienced as well. Cassidy Keller has that court sense, which in the volleyball world we also call a third eye. She can see the block, she can see our defense, and she can deliver a fast, hard ball on cue every single time. She's also a threat not only front row, but back row as well. So all around, she's a threat to us. Our goal is to try to establish a quick middle offense with Paige and Victoria right away so we can get the Knights back on their heels. Howard and Essex take the court next. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. 
First set, Essex has a four-point lead. Free ball for the Knights. Emily Underwood gives it to Cassidy Keller. She beats the solo block. 14-8 now, Essex serving Howard. Jody Baruchek controls the serve. Stephanie Kelly to Victoria Johnson. That's why they call her the hammer. Stephanie has a lot of faith in Victoria. Even though they weren't able to make eye contact, Stephanie knew Victoria would make herself available for a quick play, and she puts it away, which is something I've been able to say a lot this season. 15 to 10, Essex, big swing by Dorothy Hinson. Gets dug up by Courtney Crowd. a perfect pass to the setter, Cassidy Keller puts it away. Later in the first set, Essex gets into their system. Underwood feeds it outside to Keller. She finds the seam. A terrific shot from the sophomore out of Perry Hall High School. Cassidy Keller saw the hole in the block and took advantage of it. After six straight Howard points, we're now tied at 19. Victoria Johnson does some damage with the right hand, lowering the boom. The Dragons take the lead. Here's a quicker 31. Stephanie pushed out a little over Victoria's right shoulder, which enabled Victoria to place the ball down the left sideline. Johnson gets a piece of it. Kelly likes what she sees on the outside. Katrina Katulski with a two-handed tip. Howard closes the set with 12 unanswered points and wins the opening set. Second set now, good pass by Keller. Underwood, outside to Bray. Denied by Victoria Johnson. A big time block from the sophomore out of Pilate High School. I always love when Victoria blocks the ball entirely herself because it just goes straight down. Howard has the momentum now, 22 to 11 Dragons. Stephanie Kelly has two hitters to choose from. She goes to Paige Morgan on the right side and she crushes it off the defender. Another example of a quick set. This one is called a six. The other team was not expecting Paige Morgan to come from behind Stephanie and attack the ball for a kill. The quickness and unusualness of this play is what left Paige wide open with no block. Howard runs away with the second set. Essex needs to win this set to stay alive. Howard serving Essex. Cassidy Keller out of the back. 10 to 8 Essex. That's Keller's 14th kill of the night. Ensuing rally, Jody Baruchek gets the ball up. Kelly sets right and Dorothy Hinson responds with a clean kill. Match point now for Howard. Stephanie Kelly sends a perfect ball to Katulski. This one's over, the Dragons get the win. We were able to establish a quick middle attack at the beginning of the game. The Knights were entirely back on their heels, which enabled our hitters to not only hit the ball, but also push, tip, and roll for kills. Matt Stolwells with Dorothy Hinson and Victoria Johnson. Victoria, how did it feel to get a win in front of the home crowd here tonight? Felt really good. It felt like going back to last year, we were undefeated in the season, so it feels good to bring back those memories. Dorothy, what was the key to that first set comeback? They were leading earlier than you all came back. Um, the team, just working together, and that was basically it. We just help each other get up when they're down, and yeah. Victoria, you had quite a few blocks there. Um, what was the key to getting those blocks tonight? Um, pretty much I just have to get my hands up and get ready, get set. And Stephanie also helps me with that because she helps read and then she stops and then I meet with her to block together. So, You seem to have a, a way to get very exciting plays for the crowd. Can you feel that coming? Um, yeah, I really can because when I feel good, then I can swing really hard and it makes the crowd feel good. So their energy helps me. Dorothy, where is this team's mind right now? Right now is just working our way towards nationals. Well, first regionals, then nationals. <laughs> Victoria, how anxious are you to get back to nationals? You were made the all-tournament team at nationals last year. I'm really excited. I think we have a chance this year. I really think we can pull out first and get a ring. So I hopefully that we can do that. So, yeah. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. For Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. Joining me now is a 2012 Maryland Juco Region 20 and District G Coach of the Year, Mike Casampas. What a mouthful, Coach. That is a mouthful. Thank you, Diane, for having me here. And as far as that's concerned, I don't think that I earned that. I think that uh, my assistant, which is my daughter, Danielle Casampas, really gets half of that and the team from last year. Now here we are, 2013, so I've got to ask you these questions this year about this year's team. The Essex game, were you surprised that you were down so much in the first, in the first set? No, not really. Uh, I know that Essex has a good team and that they're going to go out there and try to win every point. Uh, we went down. I know that uh, the team is very young, uh, but they, they gained a lot of confidence. Their perseverance in that game was, was incredible, and they fought back and ended up winning the match. So what matches thus far have you had that really has revealed the character of your team? 
Well, uh, we went to CSM and played a tournament, and we played some tough teams from North Carolina, uh, several teams that went to the Nationals uh, with height, and we are not a, a team with a lot of height. So we, we've changed our, our strategy around to play against them. And I think, I think playing Montgomery, playing CSM just the other night, uh, was very important knowing that we still have what it takes to, to be a top contender in our conference. Let's talk about your leadership from the sophomore class. What can you tell me about well, these they're, they're, kids? What can you say? Stephanie's incredible. I, I, you know, whenever there's a question with, with one of the referees, I say, Stephanie wrote the book. Referees, you got to talk to Stephanie about this. She knows the rule book in and out. She knows the game of volleyball in and out. Um, her knowledge is, is great, and her leadership out there on the court uh, is tremendous. I, I, I told her that I'm going to start crying as the season gets closer to end, and I'm, you know, she's going to be leaving. Victoria, as far as playing middle, being a hitter, uh, what she's been able to help the girls with in getting up to speed with college, because it's a big difference in speed-wise uh, from high school to college. And these girls, um, I don't know how to say it, but we're not, uh, I hate to say not coached well, but they didn't get the experience in high school uh, that you would expect when they come to college and knowing a lot of these terms and details and strategies in, in volleyball. Now, do you think this group has what it takes, what I call the mentality, to make it back to nationals? I know your sophomores do. I know that our team has the mentality. I know that our team has the experience right now to get to the Nationals. Uh, it's an up and down experience for them. And as they continue, um, one thing that I told them early on in the season, even in uh, the summers, I want them to make mistakes. I want them to make mistakes because the more mistakes they make, the closer they're going to be coming to success. And continuity will, will get better. Uh, so. We're taking our, our hits on the chin, uh, but it's also hardening the girls. I, I use that term hardening, making them more experienced, being able to handle situations better on the court as they happen. So I'll say to you, when we make it to nationals, not if, but when we make it to nationals, this will be your second trip. And again, it's back in Minnesota. How will this make you more of a seasoned coach in helping these kids through the national tournament? I, th I think what's important is preparing them through each practice and each game that we play. Uh, we take each game and each match that we play as a championship, as being in the Nationals, that it's important. But being to the Nationals, now we know what it takes. We know what we need to do to get back there and what it's going to take with mentality-wise uh, to play and win the championship. Well, Coach, good luck in getting back to the big show. Thank you. The leaves are falling and the weather's getting colder, but the HCC men's lacrosse team is already thinking about spring. Players are taking part in an annual ritual called fall ball. Marla Katz tells us all about it in this month's Dragon Close Up. If you want to win a championship, you have to make sure your team is prepared. That's the idea behind fall ball, a way for the men's lacrosse team to get a head start on the spring season. Fall ball is um, an opportunity for student athletes new to Howard County uh, Community College to check out the program. Um, also, it's an opportunity for us to compete against other schools that participate in fall ball. Well, it ke keeps the guys in shape, keeps their sticks their sticks warm. Just gets you back. I mean, it, it's not it's not all it's not all the whole week. It's only three days a week, so it's not going to crush you physically, but it's at least going to start the process of getting you back in shape. About 40 players came out for fall ball this year. For most of them, there's more than just a physical aspect to the training. There's an interesting dynamic at a community college because your upperclassmen are sophomores. Most guys as sophomores are just beginning to see field at a four-year campus, so here it's really important that we get an opportunity to come together, figure out a dynamic, and, and learn from each other in a very short period of time. And since it's my first year and I didn't know these guys very well before, it's really important for me to build relationships, especially if I want to be on the same line as these guys. I need to know their tendencies, they need to know mine, stuff like that. And as the team starts to work together, fall ball gives the players a chance to pit their skills against some stiff competition. We get to compete against Division II and Division III schools in fall ball. We, we played Swarthmore and Wesley, 
and we went down to George Washington University in, in DC and played them as well. So it provides us an opportunity to compete against teams that we won't be able to compete against in the spring. I thought I was going to come in and it would be pretty simple, straightforward. It's been a lot of running, honestly. I've, I was really out of shape. I didn't think I was that out of shape. And I was surprised at how fast the level of play was. This year's fall ball has taken on a special significance. As players try to get used to the methods of first year coach Eric Faust and his staff. He was here with us last year as an assistant. so. It's, it's actually really beneficial because a lot of our guys know him, are familiar with him and really buy into his coaching strategies and his philosophies. But more importantly, we can then facilitate that with the new guys, get them interested in how just making them buy into the system because this is what's going to make us win games. I think the biggest thing is I learn what they want from me. I get a feeling of what they like, what they don't like, what's right, what's wrong with them especially. Instead of trying to learn a coach in the spring, I already know what to expect coming into the spring season. It's just really useful for me personally as a player and as for the team. Coach Faust is happy to get the extra work with his team, but he also sees fall ball as a great way to recruit future Dragons. Kids that play lacrosse love playing. If they have a choice between a school that has fall ball and a school that does not, they're more inclined to pick that school that, that does have it. For the current Dragons, fall ball has already produced one key ingredient for a championship team chemistry. I'm surprised with how close we are. What's great about this year is we have a lot of good leaders that are sophomores and returners and it, it's really surprising how close we are like off the field. That's something you're not necessarily going to get but we're very fortunate to have. Uh, the team's getting along great. Uh, I know last year one of the big issues they had was these little cliques that would form and that was one of the biggest things that our new head coach wanted to get rid of. This year everyone's kind of friends with everybody. Coach Faust worked so hard in the offseason to bring in guys that are going to help us win. Um, and now it's just up to us to make sure that we fulfill it. And I'm just thrilled we have talent uh, that's just unbelievable for a community college. And it's just a matter of coming together and, and making something that's going to win us games. Well, I think it's something that's, that, that you must have if you're going to have a team that competes for a national championship every spring. Coach Faust says fall ball also adds one benefit off the field. It helps the coaches keep an eye on how the players are doing in the classroom. So how's that going? So far so good. So far so good, yeah. Coach Faust estimates that about 35 of the players who came out for fall ball will make the team in the spring. For Dragon's Layer Update, I'm Marla Katz. You can watch game highlights before they make it on the show. Go to youtube.com slash hccdragonsports. Tune in Friday, December 6th, for an all-new Dragon's Lair update. Thanks for watching, and remember, Go Dragons!